Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the fifth in a series of video tutorials on how to create a Super Mario clone in Unity 5. So this episode we're going to be looking at a couple of things. We're going to be bringing in a couple more textures to build our area below this first pipe. And we're also going to be looking at uh, moving these blocks. So when our player hits the block they either bob up and down or they just completely destroy. Now, as I stated before, I can't do exactly what Super Mario does for legal reasons, as it is um, a, a bit of a copyright violation in some respect. But we'll be doing something, at least, that gives the same result as Super Mario. So, firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a script. I want this first block to bob up, then bob back down, as though our character is a small version of Mario. And we need a, a little script to do that. There are a couple of different ways that you could theoretically do it. Uh, one of them is using animation. However, I don't want to overcomplicate things with animation just yet. So I want to create a nice little script which will do it for us. So firstly, in your scripts folder, right click, create, JavaScript. And let's call this block non destroy. And then let's open that up and as usual opens for me in mono develop and if you've got visual studio it will open visual studio for you shouldn't take too long to open i wouldn't think sometimes it likes to take its time but others straight away okay so same as uh, the last script we wrote let's delete all of the uh, code it gives us so far and to start off with we need to set um, three variables. We need to set an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and a z or z coordinate. So let's start. Var, variable, and let's do x, let's put capital P, x pos, colon, and this will be a float. And our float is, if you remember from camera follow, we had it as the static camera y, that is a decimal number. And we want to make it equal to the transform dot position dot x. So what will happen here is the x pos variable will become equal to the x position of whatever object it's attached to. So we need to create another variable, and this is the y pos, and it's almost the same. It's also a float. And it's equal to transform.position.y. And I've spelled that wrong. Position.y. Apologies. And then finally, last variable is z or z. Pause. Again, it's a float. And it's equal to transform.position.z. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to create our function and the function is going to be on trigger enter. So on trigger enter and uh, let's see it's open bracket let's have set call as the collider. It's one of my favorites. Uh, close bracket there and open curly bracket. Now the next line, what we need to do is disable the trigger within the object, just so as our player doesn't kind of go through the object. So we need to transform dot get component, and we need open spiky bracket. Um, uh, what is it? We need the collider, isn't it? Collider, uh, close spiky bracket open close bracket and is trigger is equal to false and then semicolon so the next thing we need to do is we need to check if our game object is player so if and then open bracket uh, call dot game object uh, dot tag is equal, so that's a double equal there, remember, equal to player, close bracket, we need to perform following actions. 
So in this case, this, and this refers to the actual game object that this script will be attached to at all times. Transform.position. And we need to make that equal to, we need a vector three, because we need a, it'll be done in a 3D environment. And we simply need to put x pos, y pos, plus 0 0.2. So what we've done there is we've actually defined our y position there, and we're adjusting it by 0 0.2. So it will move up 0 0.2, but none of the others will because we haven't changed any of their values by adding or subtracting. The next line we will do a yield and all that means is we can get the script to wait for a specific amount of time before it performs the next line of code. So wait, oops, wait for seconds and let's see, let's set this value as 0 0.08. So it's a pretty short one. It can be a decimal number, that one, it doesn't have to be a whole number. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this line, I'm going to paste it under there, and I'm going to take away that plus 0 0.2. So all that's happening now is it's returning the object to its original coordinates that we specified as our variable. And after that, we will yield, wait for seconds again, and this time we'll put this as 0 0.25, just to give our character a little bit more time. And the final thing we're going to do is re-enable the is trigger. So you can just copy that first line underneath, and rather than be false, just put true. And then a semicolon at the end, and then close curly brackets, close our if statement, and then close curly brackets, close our function. And then save that script. So there are a couple things now we need to do. Our block non destroy is right there, so we just need to drag and drop that onto our object. In it, sorry, in this case, it is our first block here. So then click on the block and ensure that is trigger is enabled right there. Make sure that is a tick just there. And down here, you'll notice that the x pos is exactly equal to uh, x pos up there, y is equal to y, z is equal to z. So they should usually match what is here. If not, you may have a problem. Just double check your script and have a look. Uh, if you're struggling with the script at any point, it is available on our website for free. So just head over there and download and you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, next thing we need to do is third person controller. Click and ensure your tag here says player. If it says untagged, just make sure you do select that menu there and click player. So now hopefully when we press play, go to our block, you can see that it bobs up then bobs back down again. That's the exact outcome that we wanted at this point. So before we go into any more scripts, um, let's bring in a few textures which we'll be using in the next couple of episodes. So again, you can download these textures on our website for free. Uh, link is in the description of this video. Uh, I'm gonna take them all, and drag and drop them straight into Unity down here. Now at some point we'll probably tidy up this a little bit because we're getting quite a few textures down here and we'll probably need to split it into different sections just so as we don't have tons and tons of textures everywhere down here. So the reason we brought these four textures in here is I want to create underneath here a little area which is you know the sort of cavey look within Super Mario. Um, we're not going to use them in this episode, we're only bringing them in to, uh, well, at least start, because we'll be writing a script to go down our pipe. So let's get back into scripting. Uh, there's a lot to do on this next one, although some of it is copy and pasting, which makes it a little bit easier. So the next thing we want to do is I want to make this particular block here disappear when I hit it, as though our character is the large version of Mario. So in your script folder, right click, create, JavaScript, and let's call this 
block destroy. Okay, so we'll be using the same sort of method as we used in the non destroy. So we can kind of cheat. Now, as a general rule, um, if script already exists, why bother writing it again? So because we've already written a bit of our script that we need, we can copy and paste. It just makes things that little bit easier and it also cuts the time of this tutorial. So we want them three variables again, so the xpos, ypos, and zpos, into block destroy, delete everything you've got, and paste. Now we do also need another variable to make things a little easier. So we're going to have var waiting, and that is going to be uh, float as well. And I want to make this equal to, um, let's say 0 0.02 for now. And let's see how that performs. You'll see what that variable means uh, later on in this tutorial. So yet again, we can copy um, our function line, our transform. In fact, no, we'll just copy the function line. So we need to do this in a slightly different order. So function on trigger enter. And then our next line uh, is going to be the if statement. So we'll need if call game object dot tag is equal to player. We need that. Then we perform the following actions. So once again, we can use this dot transform dot position. So we can use this as our base. And what we want to do here is we want to make sure our block, when we hit it, it goes upwards and then falls back behind and then disappears. Because as I say, I don't want to make it break the exact same way as Super Mario. So firstly, let's do plus uh, 0 0.1 on there. And the next line, we can repeat several times. And the reason we can't use a loop in this is um, because it isn't technically looping what we're doing. But you'll see in a minute. So yield, wait for seconds. And then in brackets, simply type waiting. So if you remember, waiting was our float variable of 0 0.02. So that line will make the script wait for 0 0.02 seconds before performing the next action. So we can take that line again, and we'll make that plus 0 0.2 now. Uh, we'll have our wait line again. Now at this point, we need to disable the trigger. The reason we've not disabled the trigger um, up here to begin with is because we need to give our character a little bit of leeway when hitting this particular block. So we can take this transform component collider is false, and we've put it on this line just here. Now the next um, probably 12, 14 lines are kind of repetitive but it gives you a bit more flexibility in altering your figures of how you want it to move. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these two lines again, and that's going to be plus 0 0.3. And on the Z or Z, I'm going to plus 0 0.5. So having that means that the block is now moving slightly backwards as it's moving upwards. So copy two lines again, and let's make this equal to ypos plus 0 0.4, and then zpos plus 1.0. So now our block has moved up a certain amount. We want to start bringing it downwards again because it's moved backwards out of range of our uh, playing field. So I'm going to make it come down a lot quicker. So I'm going to increase this value here. I'm going to make this minus 0 0.1. And the Z pos, we still need to send it backwards for now, I think. So we'll put this as 1.5. Uh, next, so we'll see two lines again. And we'll make this one minus 0 0.6. And let me think. I think we'll put this as plus 2.0. I think two blocks backwards should do the trick for it. So that should never really change from here on in. It should stay as Z plus 2.0. So 
So we just need to decrease the y position a little more. So we'll put this as minus 1.6. And we'll put another line as minus 2.6. And then finally, we'll put it as minus um, 4.0. And I think that should probably do it. So this very last yield wait for seconds, I'm going to change that to 0 0.25, which if you remember, was the same value we had just before we activated our trigger again. So we want to do that. So copy our trigger code, put the trigger code back in. And then the final thing we want to do is destroy the block, which is just simply specified as the game object. And then semicolon, and then close curly bracket to end our if statement, and then close curly bracket to end our function, and then save your script. So if we head back into Unity, hopefully we'll get no errors. Nope, everything looks fine on that one. So we now want to put this script, block destroy, that we've just created. Let's put it on this middle block. There. And remember, you need to tick is trigger over here in box collider. And we've already had our player set as player, so we don't need to worry too much. So if we play and go to our first block, that bobs. Now hopefully this second block disappears. So that should do. That does the trick for now. So when we hit this first block it's as though our character is small Mario. When we hit the second block it's as though our character is large Mario. So in the future we'll be using these two scripts together on a single block. Um, when we start playing around with our character to, uh, for example, when we pick up a mushroom, uh, we want one block to either be destroyed or just bob up and then down. But quickly before we go, I know I said we weren't going to use um, these textures. However, I, th I think we'll actually begin using them just to kind of get ourselves a little bit of a bearing. So I'm going to take this block just here, which is ground. I'm going to duplicate, Control D. I'm going to bring it down, and I'm going to unparent it from just here. So it's now called ground. Five. So let's change that to dark ground. Um, let's have in brackets zero. Just make things easier. And let's just drag and drop this onto there. So we can quickly build up our little area by using the whole um, control uh, D to duplicate. Um, so let's. In fact, let's bring this further down. Uh, let's bring it out this way, just a little more. So I'm just going to create a quick little ground there. OK, let's leave that. Let's take all of them and just create the um, ground below it to make it a double. OK, so we've started building underneath our pipe, which we will create a script for, like I say. Uh, now, for those of you who um, are, are worried that there'll be too many blocks on screen at once, you don't need to worry about it at all. To be honest, you can have thousands and thousands of objects in a scene. You could always use a script to uh, enable and disable as you go along the level. So if you remember a couple of episodes ago, I spoke about um, having this particular level broken down into three sections. So once you cross into the second section, the first section um, is disabled. And as you get to the third section, the first and second section are disabled. But we'll get around to that uh, in another episode. So next time, we'll be looking at building up our area below and writing a script to go down. And we'll be going from there and see where the tutorials take us. So uh, until next time, uh, have a play with Unity. Check out our website. And uh, thank you very much for watching.